Included here is the chapter 10 lecture. It will be split into two parts to make it more digestible. This main focus will be on inheritance. Inheritance is not an inherently simple concept. It can be confusing, but if you keep it simple and don't get lost in the words, you'll find that it's not that hard to learn and you should be relatively successful pretty quickly. In this chapter we're going to, or this lecture, we're going to cover inheritance, subtyping, substitution, polymorphic variables. I will split a little bit into the presentation and go from there. The network example. So the network example is something that we've used throughout um, our code base and so we're going to go ahead and continue to expand that a little bit. A small prototype of a social network supports a news feed with posts, stores text posts, uh, photo posts, etc. It has message posts, it has photo posts, and allows operations on the posts such as search, display, and remove. If we implement this with the knowledge that we have right now, it would look something like this, where you would have two objects when it was instantiated with username, message, timestamp, likes, and comments. The other one has much the same, except it also has a file name pointing to that photo post. Notice that there's a large amount of overlap, and if we implemented this, we'd have a lot of code duplication. If we look at the class diagram instead of the object model, it would look something like this. Remember that at the top half you have the methods, I'm sorry, the fields, and the bottom half you have the methods. Some version of this will actually include signatures, but not necessarily. Okay? Notice that they're almost identical, so we're typing almost the exact same thing. If we were to implement a news feed that included this, I would probably do it with an array list of type message post. I would have all my message posts. I would also have an array list of photo posts with all my photo posts. Now think about it. If it's organized this way, is there an easy way for me to be able to get the first couple message posts out, then a photo post, then the message post, and a couple photo posts? In other words, if these came in in a chaotic order instead of just message posts or just photo posts, there wouldn't be an easy way for me to do these in date chronological order. One of the issues that you'd run into in this implementation. If we look at the class diagram, message post, photo posts are both used by newsfeed. Let me go from there. Now we can look at the sample code produced, um, and this is just an outline. It's not everything. So I've got these methods at the top, uh, variables at the top for message post. I have an array list, add a comment, like, display, etc. And that's for a message post. Now I look at photo post. Again, the code is almost the same, an array list, etc. Nothing overly imaginative here. Pretty straightforward, but almost identical code. Then in newsfeed, I have to have a message post and a photo post today to make this work. To show, I would do a for each loop on my messages and a for each loop of my photos, and that would end up resulting in a printout for both of them. Okay? But I would have just one and just the other. Critique of the work of the network, lots of code duplication. Um, message posts and photo posts are almost identical. Makes maintenance difficult, so if I do something, I have to go in one place and the other. What we've talked about in past lectures is that if I haven't done a good job with my cohesion and everything else, I run the risk of mistakes and bugs. Code duplication in newsfeed class as well. Because of the way it's done, I now have to actually have two loops instead of potentially one. How can we possibly get around this? Well, Java implements or has a concept called inheritance, which is fundamental to object-oriented programming. If I were to create a parrot, let's say, with the base stuff, and then I would add just the additional stuff to message posts and photo posts, that's unique to both of them. This basically says that this inherits from. This white square, uh, triangle says they're inheriting from post. Using inheritance, you have a superclass, only one. We don't have a concept called multiple inheritance in Java directly. There's kind of a way to do it, but it doesn't really exist. It'll be in your book. You'll go through that and gain more information, but be careful. It's confusing. Define subclasses for message posts and photo posts. So in other words, I have a parent and I have a child. Superclass is the parent, subclass is the child. One of the things that's important to understand is that a subclass can also be 
a superclass for another one, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The superclass defines the common attributes. I've already talked about that. The subclasses inherit those values from the superclass. So whatever's in the superclass automatically shows up in the subclass. So whatever's in the parent is in the child. Think of genetics. You get traits from your parents, although unlike genetics, you get all the good and bad in the child uh, versus select uh, attributes. Subclasses add other characteristics as well. So the subclass or the child takes everything from the parent and then adds to whatever they want to make it unique. If there's nothing to be added, then there'd be no value in having a subclass. So taking another further example, if I have this ultimate parent called animal, animal is either a mammal or a bird, so I have core characteristics of an animal that mammal and bird both inherit. Moving down this side, dog and cat inherit attributes from mammal and it further extend from them. Then poodle and Dalmatian further extend the dog. So if you think about one is curly hair, one is spots, things like that, these could be attributes here. Dog and a cat are definitely different and a mammal is definitely different than a bird. So there are unique attributes that would come down to each one of these different classes. Inheritance in Java, it's pretty straightforward. The parent class is just like it always was. You define a class just like you always did, nothing different. Then, for the child class, you now say extends post. As soon as you put this in, Java behind the scenes makes a copy of post and kind of sort of inserts it into photo post for you. Not literally, or but it's more figurative. That once you're in photo post, everything that's in post is automatically here. All the methods, everything else that you need, you can gain access to depending on how they're defined um, and go from there. We're going to be talking about a new visibility modifier shortly. Uh, public class uh, message posts extends posts. Similar thing. The code mostly appears down here and allows you to go ahead and move forward. It's a tremendous tool and allows you to have common capabilities. Now, things like private still exist and still protects uh, themselves from you. So when you have a superclass, username, timestamp, etc. are up in the superclass. The subclasses, private string, etc. are down here. Be careful and be mindful of the way you construct your stuff. Okay? With that, I want to go ahead and pause and split this lecture. And as we go through, some of the things I just said will become more clear. That will continue on in part two of this lecture.